This video will discuss the brightness of stars, how it's uh, classified, and what causes stars to have a certain intrinsic brightness, the amount of energy output. So people for a long time have noticed that one star is different than another star in its brightness. So, uh, before the New Testament was written, uh, the Greeks were involved with this, but in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians, sun is glorious in one way, the moon is glorious in another way, and the stars are glorious in their own distinctive way. For one star differs from and surpasses another in its beauty and brilliance. You know, the stars have different colors, the stars have different brightnesses. On a science level, astronomers have classified the brightness uh, of stars and worked with uh, uh, sorting them out and organizing them and try to deduce certain uh, properties of the stars and behavior of the stars based on their brightness after we correct for the different distances which we can correct for since we uh, have uh, different means of knowing how far the stars are from us. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about the designation system used to label stars in a constellation. Uh, in one constellation the alpha star is the the brightest star, the beta is the second brightest, Gamma would be third brightest, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, etc. The Greek alphabet is used to label the stars. This lettering is not perfect because it was done when these star maps were made and the Alpha, Beta, Gamma uh, designations were assigned in each constellation. This was a visual process. It was not done after technology developed to measure the brightness electronically. Uh, so sometimes these letters are out of order, but they're, it's a good system. Um, the alpha and the betas, those are going to be your brightest stars in any constellation. So as you look at a star map sometime, that's what you should kind of key in on. Look for those alpha beta stars. Those are the ones that will stand out on the sky. Here's a sample of the sky with the constellation of Orion. Again, constellations are areas of the sky. And we have certain uh, asterisms, dot to dot, amongst the stars to uh, designate people or animals or objects. Uh, but if you take a look here, um, the star map has these Greek letters around it where it doesn't, where they don't have names. Uh, but we have uh, the alpha star, the brightest star in the sky, in the constellation, the beta star. And some of these constellations where there aren't names, you can see the beta. Sirius would be Alpha Canis Majoris, <clears throat> and, and so forth. So you have these maps, and also on the maps, the size of the dot is an indicator of the brightness of the star. Where the dot is larger, that is the brighter star in the uh, constellation. And the smaller dots are for the dimmer stars in the constellation. So that's our, uh, our usage of, of maps. We do want to you know, employ scientific method as we study the stars. So one, uh, one activity, an important activity, is classifying them, observing them, and after that make some hypotheses. Uh, the Greeks set us up with a number system for the brightness of the stars, and they decided to use a scale from one to six, where one are the most important stars on the sky. It's like uh, athletic teams want to be number one, uh, there are <clears throat> these uh, stars of first importance, but there's more than just one number one star in the sky. So, and there are many number two stars and many more number three stars and many more and four and many more five many more six. Six is uh, just about the limit. If you're out in the Rocky Mountains in a real dark uh, uh, area of the Earth, you could see magnitude six. Uh, magnitude 4 stars, that's more the limit in a, if you live inside a small city. And if you're in a bigger city, maybe magnitude 3 or magnitude 2. Depends on how many uh, parking lots you're, you're near. But uh, the magnitude 1 stars are the very brightest stars to the Greeks. Magnitude 6 are uh, just barely visible. And this is roughly the system we use today, although there are, on the newer revised system of magnitudes, um, there are magnitude zero and there are magnitude minus one. Again, the smaller, the more negative the number, that's the brighter the star. So Sirius is, I think it's minus 1.4 for its uh, magnitude, its apparent brightness on the sky. Um, magnitude scale here, again, including more uh, objects than just the stars. 
Now the sun would be minus 26. Again, very negative means a very bright object. Uh, full moon, minus 13. Venus in its best configuration of reflecting light to us and being close to the Earth, minus 4. Polaris is plus 2, uh, plus 6, naked eye limit. Um, if you have a 8-inch uh, diameter telescope, sort of the theoretical limit there under good conditions would be 12th magnitude. You'd not be able to see Pluto because Pluto is 14th magnitude. And then some of the very large observatories, um, they can get to 30th magnitude or further with uh, special techniques. So we have that magnitude system. Uh, the magnitudes are uh, steps of brightness uh, from one, magnitude 1 to magnitude 2 to magnitude 3. Uh, it's increasing in brightness towards magnitude 1 more than you might think. It's not that uh, we would, you know, divide by 6 and then we get the, the faint stars here, divide the brightness here by 6, divide the energy by 6. It's steeper than that. The magnitude system uh, follows the sensation that your eye has to light. Your eye is a logarithmic detector of energy. <clears throat> so your, your two eyes work during the day and they also work at night. We don't need four eyes, two eyes to see during the day and two eyes that respond to lower light levels at night. Our, our one pair of eyes works logarithmically to detect the energy and uh, compresses the wide range of energy that uh, comes into the eye uh, into the sensation of brightness that we can manage and see both during the day and both during the night. And you know, By the way, your hearing is the same way. Um, your hearing, your ear, is a logarithmic detector of sound energy and you can hear both loud sounds and soft sounds with uh, your one pair of ears. So on these steps, these magnitude steps, if we're comparing a magnitude 1 star and a magnitude 2 star, the magnitude 1 star is 2.5 times brighter. And if we compare a magnitude 2 star to a magnitude 3 star, the magnitude 2 star is 2.5 times brighter. So how much brighter is the magnitude 1 star compared to the magnitude 3 star? Well, you have to multiply 2.5 times 2.5. So it's over 6 times brighter going in these two steps, 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. Each step is a factor roughly of 2.5 times brighter. We have two of those steps. They're multiplied together to give us the range and the brightness here. Um, another example here, if magnitude 1 compared to magnitude 5, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 steps of magnitude. So we have to multiply 2.5 times itself, times itself four times and we find that the magnitude 1 star is 30 times bright, 39 times brighter than the magnitude 5 star. So the smaller magnitude is the brighter star. Uh, let's suppose that I say a certain star has a magnitude of uh, 4. Name a magnitude that would represent a dimmer star than magnitude 4. It's a little self-quiz for you. We have a star of magnitude 4. What would be a magnitude label for a star that's dimmer, looks dimmer to our eye? And any number bigger than 4 would be an acceptable answer. A magnitude 7 star is dimmer than a magnitude 4 star. Um, so you just have to kind of memorize this. The smaller numbers are actually brighter objects. The smaller numbers are brighter objects. And the magnitude system is, is there to kind of uh, quantify the brightness of, uh, of the stars. Um, so let's go a little bit uh, further here and um, you know, seeing those dimmer stars you have to use a telescope beyond magnitude 6 uh, to gather more light to uh, uh, be able to uh, make your eye respond to that energy. You need to gather light with a telescope to see magnitude 7 or magnitude 8 or magnitude 9. But with your eye by itself, magnitude 6 is about the limit on a real dark uh, observing uh, region, the area of the Earth. Now, there's a distinction here. What I've been talking about in looking with our eye, that's called the apparent magnitude. It's the magnitude we observed on the Earth. Stars also have an absolute magnitude that's an intrinsic physical property of the star as to how much energy it is sending out into space. 
Though apparent magnitude is what's observed, absolute magnitude is the true uh, brightness rating of the star, how much energy is going off into space. These two numbers will be the same, the way the system is set up, sort of arbitrarily, but these two numbers will be the same if the star is 10 parsecs from the Earth. This is our standard distance, 10 parsecs from the Earth. The absolute magnitude number would equal the apparent magnitude number. So if we see a star in the sky and its fourth magnitude, and it is 10 parsecs from the Earth, the absolute magnitude is 4. The apparent magnitude that we observe is fourth magnitude. It's 10 parsecs from the Earth. That means the absolute magnitude is the same number, so it would be fourth magnitude. If we see a star that's second magnitude, and it is 10 parsecs from the Earth, then its absolute magnitude is 2. We view the apparent brightness as second magnitude. The star is known to be 10 parsecs from the Earth. Then the absolute magnitude would be a 2. Now, a question for you. If you take this uh, the star, let's stick with the current example. It's a second magnitude. Its absolute magnitude is 2. It's 10 parsecs from the Earth. What will happen to the magnitude number if this star somehow moves further away from the Earth. The star goes further away from the Earth. I'm not going to do any calculation, but just tell me what's going to happen to the magnitude number. Will the magnitude number get smaller than one, than 2 or bigger than 2? The star has an absolute magnitude of 2. It's 10 parsecs from the Earth, so its apparent magnitude is 2. If the star moves away from the Earth, will the apparent magnitude, say, become 1? Or would the apparent magnitude become a 3? The star is moving away from the Earth. Well, away from the Earth, we know it's going to get dimmer. The energy is going to be more spread out by the time it reaches the Earth. So the uh, brightness gets dimmer. That means the apparent magnitude number is going to increase. Larger magnitudes are dimmer stars. So if it's second magnitude at 10 parsecs, some further distance away it'll be third magnitude if it continues to move away it'll be fourth magnitude and uh, so forth and so on again my class we're not going to do any calculations there is a formula that relates uh, absolute and apparent magnitude and distance um, but you should realize as stars get further away their magnitude number increases it's to be a higher magnitude and then luminosity Luminosity is physically how much energy is being uh, put off by the star. There are two factors that control luminosity, two main factors. One is how big is the area of the star? How much region do we have sending light out into space? So if the area is bigger, the luminosity will be bigger. And then the surface temperature of the star plays a crucial role. Um, when we studied light and black bodies, we notice that as the temperature goes up, there's more energy being emitted at every wavelength. What this turns out to be, in terms of stars, radius is going to be our judge for area, and radius squared would be proportional to the area. So L, the luminosity, is proportional to radius squared, and it turns out it's also proportional to temperature measured in kelvins to the fourth power. Kelvin is a scientific unit of temperature, better than the Celsius, better than Fahrenheit. Um, but the temperature plays a great role in how much energy the star emits to space. So luminosity is proportional to the square of the radius and is proportional to the temperature raised to the fourth power. If you have something raised to the fourth power, that just means multiply it by itself four times. So 3 to the fourth power would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Uh, and we can compare stars then as to how much uh, luminosity, what their luminosity ratio is. And if we would have uh, a couple of stars where one star is twice as large as the other, if the temperature would be the same, the star that's larger by twice the radius would emit four times more energy, 2 squared. If we have a star that's three times the radius, but at the same temperature, 3 times the radius is a factor here, b squared would be 9, that star emit 9 times more light. If a star is 4 times as large as another with the same temperature, then 4 squared would be 16, 
the star is emitting 16 times more energy than the other. Uh, let's now investigate the temperature a little bit. Let's suppose the two stars have the same size, the same radius, but one star has twice the temperature of the other star. One's temperature is twice the other. So that ratio of 2 is raised to the fourth power. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. If the temperature doubles, the amount of energy that goes off of the star goes up by a factor of 16. If we would have the uh, case of one star having three times the temperature, surface temperature as the other star, and the same size, three times the temperature, now we do this three to the fourth, three times three is a nine, three times three is a nine, nine times nine is 81. If the temperature is three times greater, that star gives off 81 times more energy compared to the first star. So those are interesting calculations and uh, very important calculations as we go further into the course and find uh, reasons why a star's size would be different or why its temperature would be different. There are stages in a star's lifetime when the radius changes and there are stages in a star's lifetime when the surface temperature changes. And this has a big impact as to which stars on the sky are bright. So that's where we're going to uh, end in my particular class. The magnitude system, the smaller magnitude means a brighter star. The luminosity depends on the square of the radius of the star and depends on temperature to the fourth power. So review some of those concepts, read in our, in our textbook, and bring some questions to class.